Hello, dear students. Today we will be doing the chapter Seed Structure and Germination. Seeds are formed once the flower has undergone maturity and the ovules change into the seeds, the ovary changes into the fruits. How this seed helps and what is its structure, we will be doing that in detail today. So let's start. The three terms that you need to be aware of before you start with the topic seed is fruit, seed and grain. Now, if you all remember, then in a pistil or a carpel, the ovary part, which houses the ovules, it is this ovary which on ripening will change into a fruit and the ovules on ripening will change into the seeds. So the fruit is basically nothing but an enlarged ripened ovary and the ovarian wall forms the fruit wall. So the ovarian wall will form the fruit wall as in case of mango. And on the other hand, the seed is the ripened ovule. The seed is the structure which contains the embryo, which develops into a new plant. Now in some cases, the fruit wall and the seed wall are fused to form one single protective structure. That structure will be called as a grain. So grain is a very special kind of fruit seed combination, as you can see in case of maize. Now, there are certain key points that you need to know about seeds. Number one, a seed is a mature ovule. It is formed after the process of fertilization has taken place. So all seeds are formed after fertilization. It contains an embryo. The embryo will be the future plant. This embryo will later on form the uh, future root and the shoot. Now the embryo has got a radical plumule. Now what are radical and plumule? Radical is the future root and plumule is the future shoot. And to provide nourishment, the embryo has got cotyledons. The cotyledons may be one, maybe two, and then the, the seed will be called as monocot seed or a dicot seed or a monocotyledonous seed and a dicotyledonous seed. The embryo is dormant till it gets favorable conditions to germinate. Just after a seed is formed, if the seed is sown in the soil, it may not form a plant from that embryo because the embryo will be going a period of rest. That period of rest till it gets all the suitable conditions for germination is called as dormancy period. So the embryo generally displays a certain fixed period of dormancy. The seed contains an endosperm which stores food or nourishment for the embryo. The endosperm generally stores nourishment in the form of starch. Now, there are certain seeds which can remain dormant for a very long time. For example, lotus, the national flower of India, its seeds can remain dormant for a period of over 100 years. The double coconut, this is the largest seed in the plant kingdom. Its seed can remain dormant for a period of 60 to 100 years. So there are examples of seeds which can display a large period of dormancy. Seeds can be small, they can be quite large, or they can be very large. In small seeds, you have example of strawberry seeds, which are very small, poppy seeds, which are very small. The seeds can be large, which can be held very clearly in the hand and big enough, like the plum seed or the mango seed. Or they can be extremely large seeds, like the double coconut seed, which I already told you is the largest seed in the plant world, and the coconut seed. They are called as large seeds. The seeds have various sizes, various shapes, even various colors. All of these have adapted according to the plant species on which they grow. Now, if you were to divide the seeds on the basis of their endosperm, that means the nutritive tissue which provides nourishment for the growing embryo, the seeds can be of two types, albuminous or endospermic and ex-albuminous or non-endospermic. Albuminous seeds are those which have an endosperm and ex-albuminous seeds are those which do not have an endosperm. So the, on the basis of endosperm, the albuminous 
or the endospermic seeds. Again, seen seeds have monocots and dicots both. So in monocots, you have cereals and millets and palms as an example of endospermic or albuminous monocot seeds. Now, what is the difference between a cereal and a millet? A cereal is a grain which is generally used for consumption. And both humans and animals can use cereals for consumption. They are obtained from grasses, but they are meant for consumption by both animals and humans. Whereas a millet is a small sized grain, and these grains are generally used for consumption by humans only. Very rarely, in very rare cases, you will find some millets being used for animal consumption. So generally cereals are used for the consumption of humans as well as animals, whereas millets exclusively are used for humans. Then we have the dicot seeds. The dicot albuminous or endospermic seeds are poppy and custard apple. So just looking at their um, pictures will be able, making you easier, easier to remember their names later on. So on the basis of endosperm, you have monocot and dicot seeds, which have an endosperm. Now, the same way on the basis of endosperm, there are monocot ex-albuminous or non-endospermic seed, seeds. These seeds do not have any endosperm. For example, orchid seeds. Orchid seeds form beautiful orchid flowers. These seeds have no endosperm. In them, the cotyledon stores food. The Vallisneria seed. Now, Vallisneria is a submerged hydrophyte. It's a hydrophyte means it's a plant growing in water. In case of Vallisneria, the seeds are non-endospermic. In case of Amorphophallus, now Amorphophallus again, the seeds. This flower happens to be one of the one of the large flowers in the plant kingdom. The Amorphophallus seeds do not have any endosperm. Instead, the cotyledon stores seeds. Now, in all these cases, since it's a monocot, only one single cotyledon is present. But when we have dicot X albuminous seeds, there are seeds which have double cotyledons, that means two cotyledons, and the cotyledon stores food, as in case of the mango seed. Mango seed has two cotyledons, the cotyledon stores food, there is no endosperm. In case of pea, again, the cotyledon stores food, there are two cotyledons and there is no endosperm. Then you have gram seeds. The gram seeds again have two cotyledons and the cotyledon stores food, the endosperm is absent. In case of mustard seeds, mustard seeds are used very uh, frequently in cooking purposes. These seeds, again, are example of dicot, ex-albuminous, or non-endospermic seeds. Now, you have already covered this, that the seeds on their basis of cotyledon, that, that means whether they have one seed leaf or two seed leaves, they can be called as monocotyledonous seeds or dicotyledonous seeds. So monocotyledonous seeds are those seeds which have only one single cotyledon, for example, grass seed and maize seed. And dicot seeds are those which have got two cotyledons in them, bean, pea, gram, they're all example of dicotyledonous seeds. Now, there are a few key terms that you need to remember. Number one, testa and tegmen. They are the two layers of a seed coat. A seed has got a coat or a covering over itself, over the cotyledons, and it has outermost generally colored part, testa, and inner thin membranous tegmen. Hilum is the place where ovule was attached to ovary through placenta. So it is this place where the ovule was attached and later on, if the seed is attached in a pod, like in case of pea, it will be attached at the hilum. Micropyle is the opening through which pollen tube enters the ovule. During the process of fertilization, the pollen tube has to enter the ovule to deposit the male gametophyte. That is only possible through a small opening. That opening is called as micropyle. It is this structure through which water enters the seed on soaking. The micropyle will allow the water to enter so that the seed can swell up, the cotyledons can absorb food, 
um, from the dissolved food which is now formed after the seed has absorbed water. It provides for diffusion of respiratory gases. Respiratory gases can diffuse through this opening during the dormancy period and also during the phase when germination has started. The embryo has two parts, radical and plumule. The radical will form the future root, plumule will form the future shoot. The epicotyle is the region of access between the point of attachment of cotyledons and plumule, where these two attach, cotyledons and the plumule. In between them, the region is epicotyle, whereas the region which is between the cotyledons and the root, that is part, that part is called as the hypocotyle. Now, if epicotyle elongates, the germination is hypogeal. In this case, the cotyledons will remain below soil. For example, in P in maize, we will be doing the hypogeal germination. So you'll be able to see their diagrams to understand this concept even better. So if the epicotyle elongates, obviously the portion which is above cotyledons, the cotyledons will not, not get a chance to come above soil. They will remain below soil. And this kind of a germination is called as hypogeal germination. The region of axis below the cotyledon, between the roots and the cotyledon, that part is called as the hypocotyle. If hypocotyle will elongate, the cotyledons will come above soil, for example, in case of bean. Now, in a dicot seed, like a bean seed, if you were to see, this is the point of attachment of the seed with the pod where it is present, it is this point where this ovule was attached to the ovary. This point of attachment is called as the hilum. Now the micropyle is the opening through which the seed respires. It is this opening through which water enters into the seed during the process of germination. It is this opening through which the pollen tube had entered in the ovule to bring about the process of fertilization. So that is the function of micropyle. So you can see the section of the seed. The hilum is the structure through which the seed ovule was attached initially and a seed was attached to the pod. The micropyle is the opening through which diffusion of gases has taken place. These are the two coverings of the seed. The testa is the outermost. In case of bean, it is the reddish brown covering. And the tegmen is thin papery covering present inside the testa. Now, if you were to see the bean seed in a section, in a longitudinal section, the embryo will show you the formation of radical and plumule both. This is a germinating bean seed, a bean seed which has been soaked in water overnight and has the section has been cut. Now, here you can see this is the radical. The cotyledons are attached here at this point of attachment. So the region between the plumule and the cotyledon that is called as epicotyle. The region between the cotyledon and the radical, that part is called as the hypocotyle. So if the epicotyle will elongate, the cotyledons will not get a chance to come above soil. But if the hypocotyle elongates, the cotyledon gets a chance to come above soil. So depending upon which part grows, the germination will become epigeal or hypogeal. The cotyledon forms the first leaves. They are also called as the seed leaves. They are the structures which perform photosynthesis, which help in providing nutrition to the growing seedling. A monocot seed, on the other hand, has only got one single seed uh, leaf or a single cotyledon. Now this structure here is called as the embryo. The embryo here also has got radical and plumule. In this case, there is a structure called as the endosperm, which stores nutrition. The endosperm is not a structure present in beans. In case of beans, the cotyledon stores food. Here, endosperm stores food. So this is an example of an endospermic seed, whereas bean is an example of an X albuminous seed. Now, if you see the maize section under a microscope, in case of maize, there is a protein rich layer which surrounds the entire maize in between uh, inner to the seed coat, 
that is the fruit coat and the seed coat here, that nutritive layer, which is rich in protein, is called as eluron layer. And this entire portion is made up of endosperm. So endosperm is covered on the outside by an eluron layer, and then it is covered by the pericarp, which is basically the fruit wall and the seed wall fused together because maize is an example of a grain. Now you have one single cotyledon, which is called as scutellum. You can see the scutellum in this section also. The scutellum is the single cotyledon of maize. The maize has got two parts, the radical and the plumule in the embryo. The radical and the plumule are protected respectively by coleorhiza and coleoptile. These two structures protect the radical and the plumule. So radical, when it is entering into the root and the soil, the soft tissue of the radical, which are basically made up of meristematic tissue, they may undergo some kind of damage. So to protect it from any kind of damage, there's a protective covering over it. That covering is called as coleorhiza. And same goes with the plumule. The plumule cells are also made up of meristematic tissue. So here the plumule, when it is growing, it is protected by this covering called as coleoptile. These four structures collectively form the embryo. The coleoptile plumule, the radical, and the coleorhiza. Collectively, they form the plumule. Now, there are other examples of monocotyledonous or endospermic seeds. They are rice. Rice is also an example of monocot seeds, one single cotyledon. It has endosperm, which provides nutrition. Wheat, that is also an example of monocot endospermic seed. And oats, they are also an example of monocot endospermic seeds. So the, these are the three examples of monocot endospermic seeds. So with this, we finish the first part of this chapter the experiments and the remaining details we will be doing the type of germination we will be doing in the next videos so hope you have understood it all thank you very much god bless you all